And thanks very much, Chairperson. Uh, you know what came to my mind and why I object to this honorable judge? It's because he refused to answer the question on rape protest which happened at the IEC. And you know, the issue of rape is a very, very, very difficult issue in our society. Now, you have a man who's now considered to be given such a, a huge responsibility. The man of the poor as pres prescribed here, who has got no opinion about rape culture in South Africa. Twice, Honorable Shibambo puts the question to him. He never budges. Women, generally, who are the victims of this rape culture, should themselves be extremely worried that you are going to have a public protector who's got no opinion on rape, who's got no opinion about how women got treated at the IEC when they were protesting against the rape culture in South Africa. He unashamedly twice refused to budge on it. And this is supposed to be a man of honor, a responsible person. Whereas he himself has got the dark cloud hanging over him on the rape issue, which he had the platform to de deal with it and show the whole of society how he feels about this terrible pain of rape culture in South Africa. The man didn't say anything. His temper, if there is anything to go by, there is nothing for the poor there. Because the poor raises extremely petty things if, if you go through what those people always say. And sometimes you are going to have to listen to some of the things which you think they are extremely useless. Yet they are very important to poor people. And with such a man who is so impatient, a man who just speaks the way he so wishes and disrespects members of parliament to a point where he had to apologize. Can you imagine if such a person is going to deal with an ordinary poor person where there are no cameras? Now he's apologizing because cameras are before him. Imagine him in a squatter camp in Situata, interacting with poor people, behaving in a manner he displayed here. He will never apologize because there will not be anyone to say to him, apologize, this is unacceptable. If a person can behave in such a way in front of the whole nation, can you imagine what that person does in a private space where there is no authority? Speaking to members of parliament like he's speaking to his subjects. Everyone who appears before this house must know these are representatives of the people and at all times you must treat them with respect. But because for sure he's got some guarantees somewhere that this is his, he even treats members of parliament with disrespect. We cannot create such precedents. But the last point I want to make is that, you know, feminist and gender activists should always be jealous when a female is replaced by a male. It's also undermining the transformation we are pursuing. We had a successful female public protector. And all of us should be wishing to have another female succeeding that public protector so that we, we prove to the doomsayers that indeed women are capable of holding strategic positions in society and making those positions to be successful. So... I'm, I'm appealing that if anything, we cannot replace this successful public protector with Judge Desai based on those three reasons. Okay. Outburst of Honorable uh, Judge Desai was an incident. It was, it was a reflection of who he is. He even admitted that he's got a colorful character when it comes to certain issues. There are many reports where 
he lost his temper in areas where he was not supposed to. And, and that character, the temperament is not adequate, is not suitable for an office that is going to be subject to public scrutiny and heavy criticism on a constant basis. So I don't think that we should uh, consider him. And actually, instead of, actually, outside of, no, of him not answering the question about the rape protest uh, at the IEC Results Center, the other question which he didn't answer satisfactorily it's uh, the question on whether the president of the ANC was on the wrong with regards to the Secure Income Fund report. And uh, he was asked for the first time, he didn't answer, and then he asked, what is the question? And when we repeated the question that was the president on the wrong, his answer was that, no, well, we think that the national government was on the wrong. And this is a judge who knows that there is a sitting judgment in the constitutional court that says that the president failed to uphold, defend, and respect the constitution. But it's egg walking around politicians. One of the most prominent achievements of the incumbent public protector was, was her courage to deal with public representatives, including the president. That is what gained too much attention, that brought too much attention to the incumbent public protector. It's someone who is not egg walking around politicians. But already before it's even a public protector, Judge Desai came to the interview to egg walk around politicians. We cannot trust such a person. It looks like he got assurance from somewhere, so he doesn't want to offend and everything else. He should have demonstrated far much bigger courage than he did uh, in the interview. I'm also not satisfied with his experience on how he's going to practically manage the institution of the public protector because... There are institutional and judicial issues that we spoke about in the last meeting. So those must be brought into consideration when we consider him falling. He must fall.